about an hour and a half to Manchester. So really, very, very cool, it's very convenient. Um, Leicester was ranked as a top 10 city in the, to live in the UK. And it was also um, voted the, in the top 10 most affordable cities to be a student in, in the UK by the HSBC Bank. So the cost of living is uh, relatively cheap compared to uh, some of our neighbours, like who I've just mentioned. <laughs> um, just to give you a picture of my students going to PPG or like college, they teach actually the university, like, you know, not fancy, you know, people, but they can actually have their position. You have to learn to cook. It's going to be telling you, you will have to learn to cook. So, um, within the city, our campus is located right in the city centre, so it's quite unique in that most city centre campuses will be spread out across the city with a building here and a building there. For us, every, it, it is a campus like you would see outside the city, but it is right in the middle of the city. Um, so this circle, everything within the circle is on campus, there's nothing else outside it. It is all in one area. Uh, and this blue building here, that's the city centre. It's a five minute walk to get from the campus into the city centre. Um, you'll never need to take a bus when you're in Leicester, everything the way you need to go. I think a student did a video of it, took a thousand steps, something like that, to get from the campus into the shopping mall. Um, and it's a 15 minute walk to the train station as well. So everything you need to get to is wonderful. All of the accommodation as well is around the the periphery of the, um, the campus too. There's on campus and there's some um, just off campus. Um, because it's in the city centre, there's a lot of private accommodation as well that students can stay in if they want to rent a flat with their, their friends or something like that. So there's a bit of information about the university. Um, it's around about 400 courses split into four faculties, so art, design, humanities, business and law, health and life science and technology. Um, about 3,000 roughly international students from 130 countries. It's a good mix of, uh, of different students that the um, students from here are able to interact with. We've recently been investing quite heavily in the campus, um, so we've spent about £136 million in total and completely transformed it. Um, has anybody here been to, to our campus? You have? Okay. And you have? Great. It's probably changed completely. Recently, or? Okay, so you see the main yeah. Yeah, good. There will still be things that are different that you want to see. It's, it's just constantly changing, constantly evolving. Um, £58 million of that was spent on the new art and design building, the BJ Patel building. Uh, BJ Patel is an alumni of ours who met his wife while he was studying there, so he has fond memories about the university. Um, everything that you could want from an art and design school, of course, you'll find there. It's one of the most comprehensive suites of art and design courses in the UK. Everything that, that you would want to do, everything that you would want to specialise in or focus on, you'll find it there in that building. Um, £8 million was spent on the new leisure centre, the QE2, Queen Elizabeth II, and she actually came and opened it herself. Um, so we pool, badminton, basketball, and it's on campus as well. So um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of pleasure activities for the students and other workers. Inspired by our famous football team. Mm -hmm. Um, just a bit of information about the faculties. So, um, the health and life sciences, um, very, very high employability, 97% employability for those courses. Um, we put employability at the heart of everything we do. So, if, if every course, it's always about how do we get people into a job. Now, in this faculty, we have certain courses that um, are so specialised that you just don't find them in uh, other universities. To give you an example, pharmaceutical and cosmetic science. So, it's pharmacy but it's focusing on the manufacturing of cosmetic products. Um, a lot of people graduate from a pharmacy degree and they want to work for um, the big, the big you know, pharmaceutical companies, the big, um, sorry, the big cosmetic companies. Um, I can't name any of them, perhaps other people in <laughs> makeup, um, facial products, hair products. It's a different skill set of what those companies need and um, what you learn on a pharmacy degree. So we've created a course that meets the demand of the market, the demand of these companies. Um, and that's that course. You won't find that course anywhere else. That is very, very unique. Um, because we do speak to a lot of students who say, yeah, I want to study pharmacy because I want to work for L'Oreal, because I want to work for Garvey or something like that. And so this course is aimed just at cosmetics. Um, the forensic science course is one of the only units credited as well. 
so you're working towards professional standards. We've created for those students a murder room in the university. So they go in, there's blood on the walls, it's like a crime scene, there's police tape and everything, and they get to take samples. Um, and uh, we have very good links to the local police force as well, so they do try and get exposed to some real life. Uh, situations. Um, the Faculty of Technology, um, we focus on four areas. We have computing, engineering, uh, media and uh, a small master of physics department as well. The media school is new. Um, we've had uh, a lot of different subjects within it. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the more niche courses are things like um, music technology, uh, audio and recording technology. Um, a lot of students are interested in music, but maybe they don't want to study at the university, or maybe they don't think they could make it as a musician. So this allows them to study an area that they love, but with practical job skills. It's, it's actually more of like an engineering course than anything else. You know, it's big, huge expensive pieces of equipment that you're working with. Um, the, um, the, tech, not the engineering courses as well, uh, the postgraduate engineering courses all offer students uh, the opportunity to do 12 month placement. So we can issue a master's student in, uh, in um, the Faculty of Technology with a two year visa. And then we will, I'll, I'll talk about this more a bit later, but we do provide them with training to try and make sure they are um, eligible to go and do an internship as well. Um, we also offer cyber courses as well, cyber security, cyber technology, very niche areas, very coming areas, and um, work in partnership with people like Deloitte um, mm. on this. And I'm pretty sure there is a group, almost like a GCHQ group, within the faculty where they do some very, very, uh, very, very specialised things like ethical hacking. We actually took, um, when we were in Hong Kong last month at the Great Festival, and we had some of our students and then a cyber professor um, hacked into a, a little water container that we have in Hong Kong. Um, so they get to do things like that, so it's, uh, that's becoming very, very popular. Art and design, probably our most famous faculty is, is, um, is art and design, it's what we're uh, best known for. Like I said before, it's a very, very comprehensive suite of uh, courses in arts, design and fashion. Um, we've been teaching, I mean, the university initially started off as the Leicester School of Art, so which is why I think we've become very well known for it. Um, some very, very niche courses in that faculty as well, so um, contour fashion, for example. Um, most fashion degrees will allow you to study a module of it. Um, we allow you to do three years of degree. When we again, when we were in Hong Kong last month, then um, the head of one of the major lingerie companies there approached the dean and said, we, just, "We want to work with you to try and get you more students onto this course, and then we'll just take more because the standard of designer that they're producing from this course is is, is, is already professional level. So it's people who are 21 years old." to go into and become designers. The fashion is a notoriously difficult industry to get into um, and you start off doing some menial job that's not nothing to do with design normally. These people go straight to the designers, 21 years old, and they're, they're designing lingerie and bikinis and things like that. Um, it's a very, very uh, impressive course. Um, for design as well, full range of uh, those course product, uh, interior, um, graphic, uh, animation as well. Uh, we can, students can do traditional animation, or they can do some, um, digital effects animation. One of our graduates from that course won an Oscar um, for the work he did on the children's uh, movie called Frozen. Very nice kids who might see it. I have to watch it. My five year old made me watch it. Um, the, uh, the business and law course, uh, business and law um, faculty as well. Um, we have the maximum uh, exemptions for the, um, the accounting. The MBA global that we offer is a fresh MBA, so students can come up without any prior experience. Um, a lot of the postgraduate courses in this faculty allow students to do kind of built-in internship for three months, or what we call an executive company project, where the student will either work in a company, you know, a desk or everything, or they work as a consultant assisting small companies with specific problems. So a student can actually put on their CV that they work as a consultant for three months in the UK, which I think at the age of 23 is quite impressive to be able to say you've been a consultant. 
Um, a new business school that we opened fairly recently is the Leicester Castle Business School. It's called that because it is in the castle. And um, that building there that you see is part of the original Leicester Castle. So we tell people it's a bit like Hogwarts. You'll, you'll get to study in a castle. Um, it's all been um, redecorated inside and it's um, it's fully put for purpose as a business school. It specialises in very, very niche business courses at both undergraduate and postgraduate. So if you've got good eyesight and squint, you might want to, <laughs> to read what we've got there. Um, so it's it's very, very like say, very niche areas, very very highly specialised areas of business. For example, an MA in business of motorsport. It's a massive industry, if that's what you want to work in, why not focus on it as an MA? Um, your global finance, global risk, things like this, things that you know, things that bankers want to see from graduates. Um, also two uh, interesting ones, business management, sport and then business management and creative industries. These are for people who have either come from a business background or students who studied maybe uh, sports science or fine art or something like that at undergraduate level and maybe felt as though they needed another string to their bow to get them into a job in that industry. So sports, for example, very, very difficult to get a job in a degree in sports science in that particular area. Everyone's work with football. So we offer them the opportunity to still remain within that industry, still do the thing that they want to do, but with a business management element to it as well. So you might have done sports science at undergraduate, well, have you ever thought about um, managing a stadium? The King Power Stadium in Leicester, or maybe you want to be a football agent or something like that. It prepares people for that. You'll still work in the industry you want, but it's, it's going to be a business, a business side. It's, in, in many ways, it's a second chance for a student who maybe chose fight or something as an undergraduate and is struggling to. But actually, the amazing thing is, in nearly all those industries, there are more um, uh, opportunities on the business side of it than actually in the pure side of it. Very few people studying sports science actually go on to work really in, 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 in a dedicated sports area of the industry. So there are, every, every job is, uh, you know, the pure science students is up to 20, 30 available within the business side. The same as in motor racing. People think of motor racing as being, being an engineer or a racing driver. Actually, there are a lot more people working within F1 who are on the business management side than there are engineers or drivers. So it's great opportunities. Tech goal. Hope everyone knows what that is.